So I got a question from one of the readers about how uh, to make a parametric dome. And I'll do two ways to do it, one which is relatively straightforward and one which I think is more fun. So here I am in my conceptual massing environment and I'm drawing a reference line on this vertical work plane. Uh, I think it's restaurant. No, it's not. Now it's reference line. And I'm going to draw a partial ellipse, also a reference line, on the work plane of that reference line. And we're going to use I'm going to use reference lines because I'm going to make a form element out of it later, and I don't want it to get what we call consumed by the form element. So I'm going to still have this thing to control. Just make sure it's a reference line. And I'm going to cut it. I'm going to split it right here because what I actually want is a quarter of an ellipse. And delete it like that. So now, because I drew it on that reference line, it moves with the reference line. And I also want to have an oculus for this, so I want to be able to control what the size of that oculus is. So first thing is I'm going to lock up this thing to have a relationship to a base and to an oculus size. So I'm going to align it first to level one. Uh, align to level one, boink. And then I'm going to align it to this guy. I'm going to lock these. I don't think I locked it. the other one. So I'll do that now. So now that guy will move in relationship to those levels. And I'm going to add some parameterized constraints. So first I'm going to make my oculus, which is going to be an offset. Now it's going to be 20 feet right now. I'm going to take that. I'm going to add a parameter to it. I pre-baked a few parameters for this. So top radius right there. So everything moved nicely. This one, now parameterizing this is a little bit trickier. I got these temp dimensions. And if I click here, I get permanent dimensions. And I'm going to add parameters to them as well. This is going to be the height of my dome. So also a pre-baked one, 20, uh, 70. So you see it pops up into shape. This one's a little bit more complicated because for wherever I'm going to put it, I'm going to want to be able to define what the outside radius is of this part of the dome. So <coughs> what I need to do is define not just this distance, but also plus whatever this offset is. So I pre-baked that with some formulas here that the bottom of the ellipse is basically a bottom of uh, the ellipse radius, which is going to be this number right here, uh, minus uh, the oculus. So I'll also make this family available. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to add my uh, parameter to it. Everything seems to be flexing. I'll just practice it a little bit. 50. You see it resets. And I'll bring my height down a little bit to 60. And so everything's flexing. Now I hit my axis and my profile. And I create my form. Ta-da! So I have my parametric dome now. I'm going to just flex it a little bit to show you what it does. I'm going to make it a little shorter. Make it a lot shorter. Squash. And I'll make it... I'll bring in this piece in a little bit. So that'll be 25. Shazam. There we go. And I'll make my oculus a little smaller too. Five. 
everything seems to be flexing nicely. Now, um, that was one way to do it. Now, there's another way that I was thinking that would be more fun. So over here, I have a rectangle of reference lines, and I have another axis. And it's set up with the same or similar constraints. Here's my oculus uh, constraint. Here's the bottom of the radius constraint. Here's my height constraint. But it's all to this rectangle. So we can even see that I can tab into this. And I can stretch this out. And we can see that the other dome moves along with it. So these are all sharing the same constraints. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a technique for geometrically constructing an ellipse, which is a little bit more complicated in some ways, but I think it's more fun. And it also gives you sort of a control rig that's in some ways more quantifiable than a regular ellipse. So I just turned on uh, reference lines like that. I have it set to 3D snapping. And what that allows me to do is I leave these points behind whenever I click. So I'm just clicking here to this corner, and I'm going to click, whoops, what happened to my line? Is it still there? No. No, I can do it that way too. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting points down between the edges, and I can be precise about this, or I can just slap them down like I'm doing right now. They're about at every 25% of the line. I can go and be more precise about it if I want. I can select that point, and I can set that hosted parameter to 25%. And now I know that it's snapped right to 25%. You could go around and do that with all of these if I wanted to, but it's not really necessary for what I'm going to show you. So now I have what's starting to approximate an ellipse right here between these intersection points. I'm going to make them a little bit more explicit, and I'm going to drop some points down. And then I'm going to make those points hosted by intersection. So I'm going to click host point by intersection, click that line, and bam, they just go right to that intersection point. Now I'm going to do that for all of these guys. And what this basically gives me is a scaffolding to build more geometry on. And so you see my points, and if I go and flex this guy, you'll see that they move along with it. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to make a spline by points. And I'm going to attach to each one of those points, which is in turn attached to an intersection. And I have my ellipse. Ta-da! My partial ellipse, I guess you should say. So I'm going to tab into that one and actually make that one a reference line as well. Because after I make my geometry, I want to actually still have control over it. So I'm going to go back and do the same thing that we did on the other one, which is get my axis, get my quarter ellipse, and there we go. Now you can see these guys although constructed in very different ways, are almost precisely the same thing. Now, you could say, well, why do one or the other? Well, I guess there's a couple different reasons. One is that I think this is really fun. Uh, but if you're not a masochist, um, you might also want to have something that actually has measurable points on it that are a little bit easier to quantify when you go to try and build it. You could be using this to create more of a control rig so you can put more structure on it where you still have these pieces. Um, you also can do things that are using this geometry. So I'm going to select that reference line in my access line. And I can make additional geometry out of it. I can make myself like a little pagoda. Let's make like a little pagoda. Like so. It's pagoda texture. So there's just a bit of richness to sort of constructing things this way. And it comes out of sort of looking at what the geometric principles are that really create an ellipse in the first place.
and um, I'll add a couple of pictures that also show you what other sorts of control rigs that you can make using the same kind of functionality. And I hope that was fun.